So there's a large number of dimensionality reduction algorithms which are diverse in their initial steps, but they all tend to converge on the same final step. That final step involves taking the eigenvectors of your similarity matrix, or a matrix which is analogous to a similarity matrix. What oftentimes differentiates these algorithms is how you compute that similarity matrix, and how you compute it will give you different results in terms of your lower dimensional embedding. So in this video, I'm not going to focus on any particular algorithm, but I'm going to explain why the general procedure works. So just to recap, the basic procedure is you first compute a similarity matrix where the value at index ij is some measure of the nearness or similarity of data points i and j. That value could be a function of the Euclidean distance separating the points, but it doesn't have to be. You then compute an eigenvector decomposition of that similarity matrix, which you could call V, D, V transpose. If you have n data points, the similarity matrix it will be n by n, and V and D will also be n by n. From linear algebra, because the similarity matrix is symmetric and positive definite, V will be a matrix where the columns are mutually orthogonal eigenvectors of the similarity matrix, and the eigenvalues are stored along the diagonal of D, with zeros everywhere else, and those eigenvalues are guaranteed to be real. And so once you have that matrix of eigenvectors going down the columns, V, you're essentially done, because what you can do is just truncate V and take the eigenvectors corresponding to the highest eigenvalues and then go across the rows, and you'll notice that there's n rows. If you truncate it to, say, three of the columns, then you have a set of points in three dimensions. And those rows, those row vectors, will become the embedded points. And so that's the basic procedure behind a lot of algorithms within this family, uh, which you might call spectral dimensionality reduction algorithms. Spectral because they're getting the embedded points using the eigenvectors of some matrix. But the intuition for how or why this is the case, why the embedded points are the rows of this eigenvector matrix is really kind of tricky, I think. And so I wanted to make this video to try to explain that. So here's an example which I think demonstrates how it can work as simply as possible. So I have here a set of points in three dimensions. And you can see that there's three separate, very distinct clusters. So when you create the similarity matrix, you're going to expect to see something like this, which has this kind of block diagonal structure. The reason is because you know each of these blocks represents each of the clusters, because within each of those clusters, they have a high similarity to themselves, but they have a low similarity to points that are outside of their own cluster. So on the left is the original similarity matrix. On the right, I got the eigenvector decomposition, V, D, V transpose, and I plotted that product just to show that they are in fact identical. So it's just important to know that you can decompose that matrix into a product of three, which will give you the same matrix. And here I'm showing the matrix V alone. And these eigenvectors are the columns and they're sorted in increasing order in terms of their corresponding eigenvalues. And on the right, you can see the matrix D, which just shows the increasing uh, eigenvalues from left to right. So now we want to find a two-dimensional embedding for our points. We're going to take the two rightmost columns, and there's n rows in that set. And we're going to just take those values as the xy coordinates of our new set of points. I plot them and then this is the result and you can see that it's very clearly separated these three uh, clusters which is good because we wanted to preserve something about the relationship that existed in the three-dimensional space. You can see that there's kind of these three groups. So at this point you might be wondering how did this happen? How It seems almost like something magical happened, like how did we get this really nice 2D representation from these eigenvectors? And it took me a long time to figure, to think about it, but you can see if you look at these eigenvectors in V and you imagine multiplying them by the similarity matrix, because they are eigenvectors of the similarity matrix, they have to be transformed by that 
to equal a scaled version of themselves. And in order to be transformed into a scaled version of themselves, they kind of have to have that structure that you see. I guess the best explanation I can give is that it just kind of works out that because they're eigenvectors, they have this property of separating points so that when you look across the rows, it puts points in different parts of a space. So that's all I'm going to say about this type of intuition, but if it's just totally not making sense, I have a second way of explaining which might be a bit easier. So the data points are typically organized into what you could call a data matrix, which is n rows in m dimensions. So each row represents one data point in the original high dimensional space, which is m dimensional. And if you multiply this data matrix times the transpose of itself, you get what's called the Gram matrix, or I like to call it inner product matrix, because the value at index ij is actually the dot product of vectors i and j. And this Gram matrix, or inner product matrix, is analogous to or similar to the similarity matrix. And I'm going to explain why that is at the end of the video, but just for now, they say similar things about the structure of the data. So if we imagine taking an eigen decomposition of this, which is also a symmetric matrix, and we get V, D, V transpose, then if we split that product in half into two pieces, then it might be the case that one of those pieces is like the original two pieces that we began with. So we began with the data matrix times itself transposed. And then from that we got this gram matrix and then we decomposed it and then we take that deco the eigen decomposition and split it in half. It turns out that indeed this V times D to the one half is a sort of expression of that original data. V square root of D has the ability to approximate that original data when you treat the rows of that matrix as data points. So the idea is that when you treat the rows as data points, the spatial arrangement of this new set of points in the lower dimensional space approximates the configuration that is encoded in the Gram matrix or the similarity matrix. So here's an interesting example where they compared PCA principal component analysis on the top to a method called uh, locally linear embedding, which was used on the bottom on the same data set. The data set was, I guess, these pictures of lips, which they probably converted into uh, image vectors. And so to get this two-dimensional representation of the data, they took the two strongest eigenvectors of what essentially is a similarity matrix. But the process of forming that matrix is too much to go into right now, but I just want to show that this kind of spectral dimensionality reduction, it tends to sometimes produce these uh, spines or these kind of sp these spike shapes that go out toward the axes. And here's one last example which highlights uh, some interesting properties of this, this type of method. So I had used this kind of spectral dimensionality reduction on a particular data set I was working with, and then I decided to look at the embedding you know, beyond the first three strongest eigenvectors. So from right to left, it's the first three coordinates, then the next three, and then the next three, and then the next three. And you can see how the cluster of points kind of gets closer to the origin as you go higher in dimension. And that's because the eigenvalue is decreasing from right to left. We multiply uh, v by the square root of d, and that has the effect of scaling down scaling the values in those eigenvectors by the eigenvalues. And so with smaller eigenvalues, you get a smaller, the points are become more tightly clustered around the origin. But this is not going to be true for every data set.